I welcome you all from wherever part of the world you are listening or watching. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Today we are going into part two of our new series on hearing from God. For those who missed uh, part one, you are advised to either check your Facebook, your YouTube, or the audio, whichever version you have been accustomed to following, so that what we are doing today will make more sense to you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you for yet another opportunity and privilege to come to learn at your feet. We invite you to breathe on your word. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet. Father, let the entrance of your word give us understanding. At the end of today's study, take all the glory, take all the honor, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We are beginning today from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Now, from this verse 1, we can see that God speaks to his children in different ways. Let's look at that verse 1 in New Living Translation again. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In the Old Testament, God spoke many times. God spoke in many ways to his children through the prophets. Thus, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, when Saul, he was not yet king at that time, when Saul and his father's servant could not find the missing ass of his father, what did they do? Let's remember that at that time, a major way by which God spoke to his children was through prophets. Little wonder, therefore, that in 1 Samuel chapter 9, from verse 5 to verse 6, we read, 1 Samuel 9, 5 to 6. And when they were come to the land, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. And he said to him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Let us go thither. Paradventure, he will be able to show us the way we should go. Because it is prophets that could show people what God was saying. Let's now see verse 8 and 9. Verses 8 and 9. And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver that I will give to the man of God to tell us our way. And then verse 9, Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he speak, Come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. At that time, they were calling them seers. Then they started calling them prophets. Let's see also verses 18 to 20. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place. For ye shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let you go, and will tell you 
all that is in my heart. And verse 20. And as for thy asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they have been found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee and on all thy father's house? So we see here that they needed to know the mind of God. They needed God to speak to them. And God used Samuel, the prophet, or seer, as they were called at that time, to reveal his mind. This account in 1 Samuel chapter 9 shows clearly that in the Old Testament, God continued to speak to his children through the prophets. The next question we can ask is, how did the prophet themselves how did they hear from God? The answer to this is found in 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 15 to 17. 1 Samuel 9, 15 to 17. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people. You know, it went on and on. So, even though the people were not hearing directly from God, God was talking directly to prophets. Then prophets were talking to the people. So, we had an intermediary. We had like a third party in ensuring that the people were hearing from God. God himself gave us more answers. This is found in Numbers chapter 12, from verse 4 to verse 8. Numbers 12, 4 to 8. About how did the prophets, how did they hear from God themselves? And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, God is revealing how he was speaking to prophets. He said, If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, that's one way, and will speak to him in a dream, that's another way. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, that's another way. Even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold, wherefore then were ye not afraid, to speak against my servant Moses. So God showed us more ways by which he communicated with prophets who in turn could communicate with his children. God can come down, can speak to his children like he did to Moses and Aaron. He can use visions, he can use dreams. Yes, God still uses prophets, he still uses dreams, and he still uses visions still today. Now, God himself gave us more details about prophets. Let's see this in Deuteronomy 18, from verses 18 to 22. From these verses, okay, let's quickly just see what the verses say. God said, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever was not hearkened unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. God will require of his prophets whatever they say. And it shall come to pass that what we will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak, I will require it of him. Praise the name 
of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, from these verses, we see the following. God raises prophets from time to time. We still have prophets today in churches and in the body of Christ. This is provided for in the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 13. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. It tells us of the different offices, apostles, prophets, and so on and so forth. Prophets are mouthpieces for God to speak to his children. Now, from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20, we see that it is possible for a prophet to say some things that God did not tell him to say. Ordinarily, for genuine prophets, when they speak by God's inspiration, it will come to pass. Thus, in the story of Prophet Samuel and Saul that we saw a few minutes ago, all that Samuel told Saul came to pass. Let's just run through. Let's look at New Living, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. Then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it over Saul's head. He kissed Saul and said, I'm doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be the ruler of Israel, a special possession. When you leave me today, you will see two men besides Rachel's tomb at Zelza on the border of Benjamin. They will tell you that the donkeys have been found and that your father has stopped worrying about them and is now worried about you. Your father is asking, have you seen my son? When you get to the Oak of Tabor, you will see three men coming towards you who are on their way to worship God at Bethel. One will be bringing three young goats, another will have three loaves of bread, and the third will be carrying a wineskin full of wine. They will greet you and offer you two of the loaves which you are to accept. When you arrive at Gibeah of God, where the garrison of the Philistines is located, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the place of worship. They will be playing a harp and tambourine, a flute and a lyre, and they will be prophesying. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them. You will be changed into a different person. After these signs take place, do what must be done, for God is with you. Then go down to Gilgal ahead of me. I will join you there to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings. You must wait for seven days until I arrive and give you further instructions. Now let note verse 9. As Saul turned and started to leave, God gave him a new heart, and all Samuel's signs were fulfilled that day. Everything that God asked Samuel to tell Saul, all of them came to pass exactly the way God told him. Because Samuel was a genuine prophet of God, and Samuel did not add, neither did he remove from what God asked him to tell Saul. Now, the provisions for prophets and prophecies are similar to dreams and visions. God can guide us through dreams and visions. But just as all prophecies are not from God, not all prophecies are from God, it is not all visions and dreams that are from God. For example, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3. He says, For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. A dream can come based on the activities we have gone through during the day. 
It means our thoughts and our plans can be a major source of our dreams. Thus, someone who went to bed hungry can easily dream about food. This does not mean that that dream is from God because our minds can also generate dreams. Without doubt, dreams is one of the ways by which God talks to us. God himself said so himself when he was talking to Aaron in Numbers chapter 12, as we saw a few minutes ago. God told Aaron that he reveals secrets to prophets in dreams and in visions. God used dreams to also speak to Joseph, the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus, a number of times in the New Testament. Let's just see one example from Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to verse 24. Matthew 1, 20 to 24. But while Joseph thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted means God with us. And verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had told him, and took Mary to be his wife. We see a combination of God speaking through dreams and prophecy here. Another example, even though we will not read it now, is in Matthew chapter 2, verses 19 to 21. Matthew 2, 19 to 21. Because of time, we won't read it. Dreams can come from God, as we have seen. Unfortunately, God is not the only source of dreams. Our activities, our thoughts can also produce dreams also. Thus, if a person is determined to enter into a particular transaction or to marry a particular brother or marry a particular sister, and he continues to think about this, he may dream about it. And he may dream about that transaction he may dream about that marriage. This, however, does not mean the source of the dreams is from God, as we have seen. Sometimes, dreams from God are not so easy to understand. They may therefore be the need for an interpreter. Let's recall that God gave a dream to Pharaoh. In Genesis chapter 41, verses 1 to 8. Let's just run through this. Genesis 41, 1 to 8. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river, and behold, there came out of the river seven well favored kine and fat shield, and they fed in a meadow. The details of the dream continues until verse 8. Pharaoh had two dreams following one another. These two dreams that Pharaoh had were from God, but Pharaoh did not know the source, neither did he understand the dream, nor could he interpret it. But thank God for Joseph. Let's see Genesis 41, 10 to 16. There, God gave interpretation through Joseph. Let's just run through Genesis 41, verses 10 to 16. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, and 
Put me in word in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew. He was referring here to Joseph. He was a servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him our dreams. And he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto my office, and the other man he hung. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought Joseph hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came unto Pharaoh. Even now, many children of God have dreams from God, but they do not understand their dreams. God still speaks to us at times through dreams, but many of us, we don't understand the dreams. There is therefore the need for the gift of interpretation of dreams in the body of Christ. Sometimes God gives us dreams, but we forget the dreams. In such cases, there is need for prayers, for God to kindly refresh our memories. If a dream is from God, then God will be interested in helping us to remember the dreams. God uses his dreams to speak to us, and he will not want us to forget the dream. Sometimes, to emphasize the importance of a dream from God, God can bring the same message by repeating the same dream or by bringing another dream that passes the same message to us. Joseph told Pharaoh this much in Genesis chapter 41. Let's see Genesis 41 verses 25 to 26. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. Even though he had two dreams, Joseph was saying the two dreams are one. God had showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. It is God that gives grace for understanding and interpreting dreams. We see this in Daniel chapter 2. Verses 17 to 23. We won't be able to read all of them. But let me give us the references. Daniel chapter 2, verses 17 to 23. And also 26 to 28. Let us also see Daniel chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Let's just read this one. Daniel 5, 11 and 12. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Let's see verse 12. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. So if you want to be able to interpret dreams, you have to ask God, for this is a gift from God. There are also some trainings that can be given to help us become more proficient in the interpretation of dreams. We shall be stopping here for this week. Next week, by God's grace, we'll be looking at visions. We'll be looking also at the Word of God as well as counsel of others as ways by which God 
can speak to us. Let us pray. Father, your word has gone forth. We pray it shall fall on the fatal parts of our hearts. That your word shall bring forth fruits, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. Let your word continue to become flesh. Let us continue to grow and increase in understanding, even by your word. May grace and peace be multiplied to us through the knowledge of your word. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your holy name. If you don't help me, where else can I go? If you don't heal me, where else can I go? No way.